This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. Hello and welcome to episode 321 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. It's all about B Corps in the travel industry. I'd quickly like to pay my respects to the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, where I'm recording this podcast today on a beautiful autumn evening. So B Corps, if you haven't heard about them, are good things, I think. And uh, B Corp is actually short for... Uh, benefit for all corporation. So basically these, it's a process where you can be certified as a for-profit business that benefits, that's the benefit for all, benefits all stakeholders. So essentially a business that prioritizes everybody who has a stake in what the business does. So including the people, customers, local communities, the environment, the planet, everything. So it's a, a real benefit for all idea. Hence uh, the B in B Corp. Now, I actually chatted last year with Jonathan Coleman of Untours. And as we talked, I discovered from him that Untours was the very first B Corp. And that discussion has inspired me to find some other people to discuss the B Corp concept with and create this whole episode. So thank you to Jonathan. And and so, of course, he is my first guest. So um, I initially asked Jonathan to explain to me how it came about that Untours became the first B Corp. So Untours was started in the 70s, really found its footing in the 80s and 90s. The basic premise of an, of an Untour is that it's not a traditional tour. It's independent travel with some support. It involves, in a very unique way in the early days of the business, not so unique now, when someone travels on an Untour, they don't stay in a hotel, they stay in a, an apartment or, or a cottage or a home. Groundbreaking in the 70s and 80s. You know, the rest Definitely. of the world caught up with that. Uh, <laughs> Decades later. We were really early on to that movement. And in those days, especially, it was viewed as the best the best type of traveler for a local community. Now, of course, as, mm. as it's really scaled, we, we see the shadow side of the short-term rental movement and, and the gentrification and the, the rising of prices and, and how that has happened as it's been commoditized. But in those early days, it was really viewed as the best way to travel because it was slower. It was in a local community. The money spent on lodging was going directly into the hands of someone in the neighborhood. So that's the premise of of why we were started, to have a a slower type of travel, a more sustainable travel, and more culturally embedded and culturally Mm -hmm. uh, appropriate style of travel that ticked a lot of boxes of what we would now see as B Corps. There weren't certifications for it in those days or these kind of things. It was just the way that the founder of our company, his name was Hal Talsig, it's the way he thought, the way he thought business should work. It was established in that way from the very beginning. Also, Hal, the founder was a really interesting guy, really radical in the cool kind of radical ways. And one of the ways in which it was radical is that he had taken a vow of poverty. He committed to not having any money and he started making a bit with on tours. So, (laughs) oops. (laughs) Yeah. So I got some money. What do we do with this? So um, they tried a bunch of different things. The first few years they made a profit. They, they actually like sent, divided that up amongst their customers and sent the money back and said, sorry, we charged you too much. (laughs) We charged (laughs) you too much. Here's some of your money back because we didn't intend to make money on your trip. They all thought that was crazy and happily cast the checks, I think. But eventually settled on setting up a foundation to take the profits from Untours. So Untours Travel right. operated as, a, as an independent travel company. And in 1993, the foundation was set up to take the profits of Untours. And they lived parallel lives for a long, for decades, and they've come back together in more recent years. But Hal, our founder, right. never took a dime out of, out of the company. As there were profits, they were, were donated over to the foundation. And the foundation uh, went on to do our thing, which is supporting entrepreneurs around the world in the form of low interest loans and other flexible investments. So that history of, of, of how the company was established both and how it operated from a sustainable and a you know, community beneficial way and the fact that all of the profits were going over to the foundation, which was doing also this important work in communities around the world and funding entrepreneurs who were building more amazing businesses with those same values. And then it caught the eye of the, the folks who founded the B Corp movement. Ah. And so as they were trying to get their heads around what this idea that, of a framework for how for for how businesses could be you know could could be more than just profit generators, but but it could be could be more than that. And, and setting a structure for that really early on, they connected with our founder Hal at Untours, and um, he became one of their inspirations for what a B Corp should look like. You know, one of the father figures to to the B Corp movement. That's you know that's how we were involved in that process before there were B Corps. We were involved with the founders of the B Corp movement, 
And as they were setting up the initial assessments and things like that, they were looking at Untours as an example company of what they wanted B Corps to be. Amazing. We had been the privilege of being the first ones to go through that process. And so there's still an amazingly deep connection there. We're, we're incredibly proud to be, you know, to be the first ones to be part of that journey. Every year there's, a, there's an award that's given out to a, a B Corp leader that's given out by the B Corp community, and it's named after our founder. So there's still that deep, commun- that deep kind of connection. And so we were able to present the award this year to the founders of Patagonia, who are the, the winners right. of that award this year. Patagonia, the big clothing company, a uh, sustainable mm. clothing company that's a certified B Corp. They just donated 100% of their, of their company to charity. So now they have. Amazing. The earth is their only shareholder uh, because they've donated like all of the, the stock to these uh, environmental focused organizations. So mm. uh, that's yeah. that's very cool. And that's a process that we went through some years ago where the the when our founder passed away, his last last act of radical generosity was to transfer ownership of the company to the foundation. So now the foundation is actually 100% owner of B Corp of the B Corp travel company. Got it. Right. Maybe a quick follow-up question. If I'm a traveler trying to book my trip, why should I choose someone that's got B Corp that says B Corp on their website? Because it's it's one of the only ways to know that the business you're traveling with is actually doing what they're saying. They're actually a good actor in their mm-hmm. local community and for the environment as a whole. Again, there's lots of talk around sustainability and travel and there's a and there's general movement in the in the positive direction. I do believe that but it's really hard to prove it. And there's a mm. lot more talk than there is action. And if a company has gone through the B Corp certification process, they are more t- more action than talk, or as me- at least yeah. as much action as there is talk. And and they can prove that it, because it is a really rigorous process to go through the certification. As a, as a consumer, travel or, or, or otherwise, I'm always looking for that logo. You can't always find it, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. but when I can, uh, I, I, I always prioritize it for that reason. I love the story about how the Untour's founder returning their profit to the customers saying, sorry, we charged you too much. Oh, what a great guy. Anyway, uh, my next guest today is Narelle Wilson from Volta Consulting. She's a business consultant here in Perth, and I knew that she knew a lot about B Corps. So I got her on to explain more of the process. And my first question to Narelle was, if I run a business and I want it to become B Corp certified, what do I do? What's the process? Okay. So, well, um, B Corp does run um, a couple of training sessions that you can attend, which are really good to give you the flavour of what actually a B Corp does and and includes the process of how to go through the application. So, their first training is free and it's called Behind the B. So, it gives you that real broad overview um, of the B Corp movement and what happens. And then they run a second workshop that you can you can go to, and they take you through what they call a, a B Impact Assessment Tool. So it's an on it's online. You log in to it's almost like a workbook, and you work your way through the different areas of the tool. You have to work out what your baseline is. So your baseline is where you're at now, right. and where you need to be to get to the eighty points, which allows you to be certified at that point. Okay. So what happens is that um, using the tool, you go through the, the five different impact areas that they have, which is governance, workers, community, environment and customers. And then there's multitudes of questions within this assessment tool which you answer to where you're at at the moment and you accumulate points based on that. So under governance, you've got to actually embed the fact that you look after all stakeholders and not just shareholders in in your constitution so it's about Mm. saying you know we're running our business for a profit yes but we're also going to make decisions that are based on all stakeholders external as well including the environment so it's, it's about making sure that you have every decision is backed by what's good for the community and and the world, essentially. Yeah, uh, that's if I'm thinking of tourism operators, that's like extra relevant. So the you know imp- how you impact the community that you're visiting is yeah often something that's been overlooked in the past. So it's good to think about it from that perspective. That's exactly right. And when you look look at the you know the community environment, your customers is it's about okay, are you engaging with sustainable suppliers or are you perhaps traveling to the the less well-known places and but you're not damaging the environment when you go there so I mean how many times you look at Venice they say it's overpacked with tourists now so I think if you're a tour operator you'd be going okay well 
do we actually need to have tours operating within Venice? Mm-hmm. And if, if we do, how can we make sure we're minimising our impact and our footprint yeah. if we're going to go there? So it's all about looking at what you're doing globally and breaking it down into these little minute areas and working out how you can perform better. How can you lessen your impact that's out there or increase your positive um, impact? Mm-hmm. You can get, the points are accumulated. Um, like you can only, some of them you might only get half a point for, so it still allows you to have a little bit of points. But if you've got a really robust policy or a procedure on something, then you get maximum amount of points. Right, and that's I think the key to getting the eighty points is that it has to be documented. And because you have to provide evidence that they can then assess it on. There's a lot of people out there, especially with the rise of greenwashing, saying, well, we do this and we do that. Mm -hmm. But some people may do it on the surface, but they don't don't go down into the full depths of the issue. And if you did, it means in this circumstance you'd get more points. So the faster you get to 80 points. Um, So a few things like um, I've looked at as you have to write an ethics statement, you know, what does your business stand for? What what will you and won't you do? Um, You can look at sort of who you work with and the services that you offer as well. Like are you actually offering a service to perhaps a marginalised community? Are you servicing these underutilised communities? whether that be women or whether that be people of people of colour or someone that just hasn't been looked after in mainstream society. So you, you look at that. And it goes from simple things, which bank are you using? Mm. And they actually go through and they ask these simple questions. Mm. Are you banking with, you know, a, you know, someone that's responsible climate-wise? Are you carbon neutral? Do you monitor your energy? So you may be carbon neutral, so you might pay for that and offset all your footprint, but are you actually taking the next step in your business and monitoring and actively trying to improve mm-hmm. your footprint? So they will give you extra points if you're actually doing those extra steps. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually quite it's quite good how you, how you work your way through it because it also tells you what you can do to improve. So it's not just a, I'm here, these are the points I've got because this is what I do. But, okay, well, once I've done that, what's the next step? What can I actually do to improve my score and my, my impact that's out there? So once you go through and you get to at least 80 points, you're allowed to then um, apply to be a, a, a B Corp. You submit it for the review and you pay an assessment fee. Right. And then the B Corp people will pick it up to evaluate it. Now, that can sometimes take, I believe, between three months to maybe up to 12 12 months, okay. depending on the complexity of the organisation. I think the simpler you are, the faster it might go through. I can't remember the exact number, but apparently the take-up of people applying to be a B Corp has just jumped astronomically in the past few years. So they're very busy. They're super, <laughs> they're super busy. That's great. Get but, it. yes, but it means yeah. it takes a bit longer. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so then if you're approved, you, you pay the fee to become a B Corp and you become certified. So I'm grateful to Narelle for giving us a good overview of the process and I thought it would also be interesting and useful to speak to someone, uh, to a business that has recently become B Corp certified. So my final guest today is Hayley Peacock-Gower, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Aurora Expeditions. They're a small ship expedition cruising company um, based out of Australia and they have become a certified B Corp recently, just in January this year, 2024. So Hayley explained to me first that uh, since Aurora's founder, mountaineer Greg Mortimer, was a very deeply or is a deeply passionate environmentalist, uh, these kinds of issues were already really embedded within the company and taking the next step of becoming B Corp certified was pretty natural. So I asked Hayley to describe the challenges of going through the B Corp process. I think there's two words that sort of sum it up for me. It's rigorous, but rewarding. It's actually a process that spans almost three years. Deep commitment from the business. Across that three years, there's kind of three steps in the process. So there is kind of the scoping phase of the process. Then there is the preparation of all of the documentation, all of the things that we need to do. And then there's the assessment stages. As we talked earlier, when people think of sustainability, like you said, they naturally think much more of those environmental impacts and policies first. But as we know, B Corp certification is this, but way much more. 
So the actual impact assessment covers five key areas. It covers governance, workers, community, the environment, of course, and our customers. And so the challenge and ultimately the opportunity here for us is for us to review and evaluate our efforts in each of those five areas and then determine, well, how could we really enhance our impact across every area of our business? And then that had also led to something we did prior to this was embedding sustainability at that functional level. As I said, everyone in the business has sustainability in their job description. So whether you're in marketing or you're in finance, HR, sales, whatever it is, you have that commitment that you need to, and that is weighted around five or 10%. Wow. So it's a deep commitment. So then what we did is we made the changes across our business to kind of enhance, but more importantly, really formalize a lot of the things that we already had in place already. And that included things like amending our company constitution, formalizing all of our policies, and just to really ultimately to ensure that we would be meeting a higher level of accountability and meet the legal commitment that we are actually purpose-driven. Mm-hmm. It, it is, as I mentioned, rigorous but rewarding. You might be interested in well, what, are, what are some of the specific examples of measures mm-hmm. contributing to the certification? So one of the key areas um, that we focus on is around our supply chain. So implementing what we implemented is a supplier audit and we formalised our supplier code of contact where each of our suppliers will actually have to adhere to our guidelines um, covering social, labour, environmental issues, as well as a thorough review of our environmental initiatives. So we did a lot of work across energy, water, and waste management, really three key areas. So the supplier piece and improving the supply chain is actually quite critical. And I'm Mm. sure you can appreciate that's an ongoing process. We definitely want to work with suppliers that meet that code of conduct and and our views there. The second area, um, which is quite critical in the process for us, was around our onboard dining. Ah, interesting. So, you know, food plays such a big role on these trips We worked on new developments to our onboard dining across our Antarctic voyages to start. So what we are doing is we are increasing our support to the local community of farmers and smaller scale farmers, Mm. particularly organic farmers in Argentina. So our voyages to Antarctica actually leave from Argentina. So we had a look at where are we getting our food for these voyages and what we wanted to do was really um, reduce kind of the distribution and all of that footprint and actually get closer to the source from where we are going from. The other thing, all of it, we've been working on our seafood chain. Mm. So all of our seafood will be certified by internationally recognised certifying bodies. And to this effect as well, we've taken a step further. We've also um, eliminated fish, eggs and tuna from our onboard menus across both ships because they are quite critical in the the ecosystem Mm -hmm. um, in the ocean. So, yeah, and I guess then the third piece that's worthy of saying is really our staff, our people. Formalising our learning and development has been quite fundamental. We have a big focus on health and wellness with our hybrid working policies. We've also importantly looked at our gender pay, equity analysis, and introduced diversity, equity, and inclusion surveys across the business as well. Awesome. So that's just a few things. Mm. There's obviously quite a bit more going on. But the whole B Corp certification process like, is a good stimulus to dive deeper into all of these kinds of areas, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly right. It actually gives us the opportunity to really review what we're doing, how we can do better, and sort of identify well what are, what are going to be the next steps. And as I mentioned, some of the things we already had in place already, mm-hmm. we we're already doing them, but they just weren't formalised in a way. Nor were we putting maybe the more accountable actions on ourselves to make sure that we always continued to do them. So yeah, it was a really 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 good process actually but we are by no means done Mm -hmm. now that we have the certification (laughs) it means that we will always be working to be better Um, and b corp recertifies every three years so we need to always make sure that we're keeping up with all those high standards and that's something 
that to a customer that, yes, if you saw that, you would go, okay, yes, I know that that business is committed to keeping up to the high standards of social and environmental impact and they're consistently improving. And that's definitely our commitment. So I think there's a lot to like about the whole B Corp process. It's not a one and done procedure and I feel pretty confident having seen, you know, lots of uh, travel companies go through this process that I, you know, do have the feeling that they are pretty thoughtful in their approach, um, that, you know, seeing that B Corp logo is a pretty good indication that you are choosing someone who is looking after the world a bit more thoughtfully. So I hope that you have learned as much as I have from this episode. It's been really interesting for me to understand a lot more about what a B Corp is. So thank you so much to my guests. Uh, first of all, Jonathan Coleman from Untours Foundation. You can read more about Untours at untoursfoundation.org. And also a big thanks to Narelle Wilson from Volta Consulting at voltaconsulting.com.au. And lastly, thanks to Haley from Aurora Expeditions uh, at auroraexpeditions.com.au. Please come along and have a chat. Have you ever uh, intentionally chosen a B Corp? What do you need to know, you know further about B Corps? Um, anything that uh, is relevant, come along and chat either in our Facebook or LinkedIn groups. Just search for Thoughtful Travellers in Facebook or LinkedIn and you will find us there. And don't forget that I'm now running the Thoughtful Travellers newsletter at Substack and you can find me by going to thoughtfultravel.substack.com and all of these links and more will be in the show notes. For this episode, the show notes are at notaballerina.com slash 321. As always, thank you so much for listening. This has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now.